Welcome back to another episode of Important Miscellaneous Talks. I'm your host, Glasser Crossfield, and we are changing the world one podcast at a time. And today we have the international marketing genius here with us today. Please introduce yourself. I'm Zion. What's up? Um, I'm Zion from Charlotte, NC. I'm 19, little dude with a baby face. And I run a company called eCare Behavioral Health Institute, and we're projecting to do a million dollars in sales by the end of next year, hopefully. And um, I got a cute little TikTok following. I just like to, I don't really sell anything on there. Just love to inspire and educate the community of young entrepreneurs. You, you said you run the company as a CEO? Yeah. So. Yeah, we've got about five employees right now. Most of them are, three of them are overseas because it's cheaper, but getting there. How do you run a billion dollar company with only five employees? Oh, did you say billion? I said million. <laughs> I thought oh, I was... you said million? Oh, my fault. No, no, million. But, I mean, not a million dollar company. We're going to finish this year off at about 400 grand top line. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you can sustain that with the amount of employees we have. Yeah, well, let's begin to existence. Yeah. So that's what's up. So, but like how, so talk a little bit more about your company and what you guys do. Yeah, it's weird. You know, it's not drop shipping. It's not affiliate marketing. Like everyone makes it out to be, or everyone thinks it is. We sell certified online trainings for mental health therapists. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. So how did you come up with that concept? All good, bro. My dad's a counselor. So, <laughs> so in order to uh, start the company, you need to uh, have some counseling signatures and whatnot. So he's technically the president and um, he helped with some connections and whatnot to help get started this thing. So your job is basically to give the blueprint for therapists. Um, yeah. So the business model, I'll break it down. So I don't know nothing about counseling. I'm a CEO. I don't know nothing. So what I do, I just hire third party instructors, third party counselor and experts. And I teach, they, Hey, teach the training for us. They teach it, split the commission. just like that. Got you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's interesting. So, uh, what do you think is your best piece of advice when it comes to doing business, doing business? Who am I talking to? Um, am I talking to someone just trying to start out from complete scratch or talking to someone who's already in it or? Uh, yeah, there's someone trying to start from scratch. From someone trying to start from scratch, I honestly think first step is always self-development, in my opinion, because that's what I did first. Um, I think people make the mistake of you scroll on TikTok, see some businesses, see some kids, uh, getting rich on social media they got their own businesses and they just jump in and start and it's always drop shipping or something right and the problem is that um a lot of people don't have high income skills to leverage into these ventures that they go off into and that's why they fail people skip the step of self-development and learning high income skills because your income is a direct correlation to your skill set and the value you can provide and people who are just starting off from complete scratch don't no offense, don't really have the skill sets yet. And that's completely fine. So I, my biggest advice is to jump into your first business with the mindset of not expecting to get paid, but with the mindset of expecting to learn, stack your skill sets, stack your skill sets and learn as much as possible. Because it took me eight months before I received my first penny with business. So it's a game like that. So how did you educate yourself? Was it through social media or reading books or Google or... You know, did you have help or uh, mentorship along the way? Yeah, a lot of things, man. Um, Like, you could get a master's degree off YouTube today, bro. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I started off. Um, I first started off before I even started. I just knew I had to learn high income skills and I chose marketing. I'm like, okay. So I just went to YouTube, Marketing 101 for Beginners. Click the first video and I go from there. And then I spent, when I first started off, when I didn't start the business yet, I had two to three hours every single day where I would just learn. YouTube, I would buy some courses. Um, I just recently bought a mentor. And yeah, all of a sudden, I listen to podcasts all the time, read books, of course. And I just fill my brain with knowledge every single day, at least one hour a day. Mm. Okay, so you mentioned that it took you eight months to see your first penny. Um. So during that eight-month time span, can you describe like, your daily routine okay 
so it was learning. A lot of it had to be fulfilled, filled in with learning. And whenever I was starting off in that stage, I was doing that whole self-development routine that we kind of see everywhere on social media or whatever, the self-development community, you know, wake up at five in the morning, which I was doing. I was going straight to the gym. Then I would uh, come back and meditate, eat breakfast, and then I'd probably take a cold shower or something. And I would do all these crazy habits, which are healthy at the same time, but it's honestly all a scam. And I was following that routine for months, right? Mm -hmm. um, not saying it's a bad thing, but I'm just saying that it's not necessary at all. Um, a lot of people, because if you follow this crazy routine, you got this, you got this, you got this, I would come home. I mean, I mean, I would do all these routines and I would finish my morning routine, that crazy long routine. And what work did I get done? How much sales did I make? How much, how much did I move the business forward? I mean, nothing at all. So I learned that the number one habit that I feel that every new entrepreneur especially should try to inhibit is wake up, preferably early, and get straight to work on your number one priority of the day, right mm -hmm. away, right away. Yeah, I, I, I like that you said that. Uh, I incorporate some of those things into my lifestyle, not all of them, or some of them are a bit more sporadic. And I think what I take away from all of those uh, self-improvement hacks, so to speak, is to find what works for you. You know, maybe because there's, there's people that talk about how beneficial the cold shower is, or how beneficial, mm -hmm. you know, first thing is the meditation or going to the gym or find what works for you. Everyone's different. The cold shower may not be, you know, the thing that got you to the next level, but it might be someone else's. So, yeah, exactly. Find what works for you. I used to be a morning person, but I, I'm not a morning person, but I was forcing myself to be a morning person. And now I wake up at about eight, eight thirty, nine o'clock, <laughs> you know, and I still get stuff done. Just like you said, find what works best for you. What kept you going during those eight months? What kept you motivated? Because it's so easy to just fall like after a month. 30 days of putting in the work, man, it's, that's enough for a lot of people to be like, you know what, maybe it's just not for me. So eight months, almost a year. What kept you going? That's a good question. Um, there was a lot of things, but one I would say is because the preparation. I came in beforehand. Uh, before I even started, I was like a DoorDash driver. That's what I was doing. So I was just riding around DoorDashing. And what drove me was that I would drive past ghetto neighborhoods or whatnot. And then I drive past rich neighborhoods. And when I drive past the ghetto broken down houses, I just told myself every time I, I just can't live like that. I'm, I'm, I don't know how I'm just going to figure out a way. I just cannot live like that, you know? And um, boom, it's just like, while I was, while I was driving every single day, it snapped in my mind and I told myself, I'm going to be rich. I'm going to die trying to get rich. It's going to happen. And I prepared myself. Entrepreneur, whenever I start this thing, I'm going to not give up. I'm going to keep going no matter what happens. I'm going to whatever, whatever. So I, it's really, it was really all about training my mindset beforehand. So knowing that it was going to take patience, it's going to take work coming in. So, so for you, one of the things that worked well for you was positive self-talk. I don't know if it was positive self-talk, which I do, but I was just really just obsessively thinking about the goal uh, and just obsessing and obsessive wanting it so bad. Mm. Yeah. Why, why should people listen to you as in why should, uh, cause there's a lot of people who, you know, are in your field. What yeah. separates you from the people who also talk about similar topics? What separates me? Well, it's because I really understand the person I'm trying to talk to, you know, I really did because not too far ago, I was in those shoes or whatnot, you know, I know exactly how it feels to start a business, not get paid and um, feel the self-doubt, feel the uncertainty, kind of look at others who made it on social media and just kind of compare yourself and feel down and neglected. I just know exactly how it feels because it was pretty recent, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, that's why I would say, so I could really dive into the shoes because the better you understand someone then the better you're able to help them. So that's really what I've been doing. That's what helped me kind of grow a decent following on TikTok. Once I figured out who my niche was, who my audience was and what they were struggling with and what they wanted, I just went all in and I just make my content directed to people who were previously in my shoes not too long ago. What's the... Uh... 
the end goal for your business? Like, what's the ceiling? I got you. If you have one, to be like, okay, I'm here or yeah. I'm I got you. Fifty million dollar exit. We're just looking to sell it for fifty million. That's the goal. Um, if you can't, I don't, cause like. I, I need to look into more in M and A and stuff like that and valuations and whatnot. But getting into it, I'm looking to hit 20 million revenue top line at least. And if we could get to 20 million top line, I don't know the multiples and how it works for my industry, but that would help. That would give us leverage to sell it for around 50 million or so. So that's what I'm shooting for. So it absolutely amazes me that you're only not you're born in 2000s. <laughs> You're born in the 2000s, man. You probably lived through like what, like two presidents? <laughs> 2003, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So like, you're you're really young. You know, you're 19. You're 19 years of age. So, what, what? How did you incorporate this mentality that you have now? What age did you incorporate that mentality? And why don't more people your age have that? Because they're just lazy and they have false expectations. 52% of 18 year olds in America think they're going to be millionaires by the age of 25. Wow. Yeah, that's false, very false reality. <laughs> the, average, the average age of a millionaire is in their 50s. People don't know that. Yeah, facts. That's a fact. And a lot of people just get so tied to the outcome, and which was me when I first started off. The reason why the stat obviously isn't going to fulfill itself is because everyone's so tied to the outcome opposed to the action of doing. A good example of this is, let's say you set the goal, I want to have 100,000 YouTube subscribers. Don't make that the goal, the outcome. Make the goal, I'm going to make 500 long form videos of content. Make that the goal, the action of doing. Because if you post 500 long form content videos, it's gonna be almost impossible to not hit that goal, you know? So get attached to the doing opposed to the outcome, you know? Mm. So how did you incorporate this mentality that you have now? And what are some of the ways you implemented that into your daily life? Yeah, um, if I could answer your question right, hopefully I am, but it's I found my passion, bro. I found it and it's business, bro. The game, just the game of business, the way that business works, I'm obsessed of it. Oh, I'm obsessed over it. I love it. And I could do it every day. Work doesn't, work feels like play. You feel me? Work feels like play. Um, I I work, 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 because as a business owner, you, you set your own paycheck. And when the paycheck comes in, I, oh, I forgot about this. Sometimes I pay myself late. Sometimes I don't even pay myself at all because I forget about it. Like I, 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 seriously, I seriously don't even think about the money, you know? I just love what I do so much. And the money, uh, the revenue targets are just kind of milestone achievements that tell me how good I am as an entrepreneur and how much I'm growing. So just kind of loving what I do. If that answer your question. What are some of the things that you do with your money? I mean, the average 19 year old they're making 400,000 off their business, you know, might, I don't know, rent out a movie theater or something. I don't know. <laughs> like, what are some of the things that you do with your money? Uh, nothing much. I mean, I live with my parents. Like, <laughs> I live with my parents. Um, I bought this the other day, like last week, and this too, but that's it. Like, that's probably the only cool thing I've ever bought in my life i mean <laughs> i just just chill bro do your parents make as much money or do you make more than them no they work in the business we all it's like a we work together in the business ah my mom's my coo and my dad well he doesn't really he's like the training director but he doesn't really work in as active he has his own thing going on but he chips in and teaches me the industry and whatnot Yo, Prince, Prince and I talk about this, like we want to have our family on payroll. So this is very... Yeah. Because this is how you create generational wealth. This yeah. is how. This yeah. is an example. Do you have any siblings? Nah. Oh, nah. That's just you. <laughs> yeah, bro. It's oh. me, bro. <laughs> that is phenomenal. Wow. So, <laughs> now nah, for real, they're doing a thing. Uh, So, have the women showed up in an abundance since your increased popularity? Nah, bro. Nah, actually, that's that's no. Um, and the reason why is because I don't. Nobody knows. Like nobody in my circle in my city really knows. You know, I just keep it low key. I don't post what I do. I don't post the money. I don't. You don't post I, the lifestyle. Mm. I don't. I don't really do that. 
uh so no one really knows you know that's why maybe if i were to start flaunting it and posting it then maybe but i'm not a big fan of flexing and posting and the reason why is because i feel like people who constantly have to flex their wins materialistic especially are super insecure mm. super insecure and the reason why is because they don't have they need to find full fulfillment with social validation because they couldn't find that within themselves so if he see if Sarah sees what I'm doing, if my boy John from high school in math class sees what I'm doing, that I'm winning, that this new car I got, then I feel better about myself. And I just don't want to live like that. You know what I'm saying? And plus, all this flexing and posting doesn't help anybody or you in any way. Because the vast majority of the audience who even sees those wins are going to feel happy for you. They're going to build a sense of, envy and resentment towards you and mostly it's subconscious and it's just not going to help any of you out at all so i just don't do it what, what would you say is the main goal for your content when you put out the type of content that you put out what do you think what's the message you're trying to convey that's a great question and everything clicked until i really clicked when, when i figured it out and it was just to inspire and educate the community of young entrepreneurs who want to start and grow their business. That's really it. Tell well, them they can do it and teaching them how to do it. What would you say is the best way to make that first step to get into business? Learn high income skills. Learn. Yeah. Any examples of those skills? Yeah, it's a lot of them. It's, it's based on preference at the end of the day, um, whatever you like, like, let's say if you're a geeky, nerdy dude, you could get into coding. Um, if you've just always been kind of creative, go ahead and look at design. Um, there's marketing, there's sales. If you're good with people and you like listening, there is, um, you could even do web three, user experience, web design, web development. I mean, there's so many skills going around, finance, accounting, whatever. But um, once, I could, I could give you three skills that essentially every successful entrepreneur needs to inherit, which is marketing sales, and then reading income statements, accounting, basic accounting. And I would throw on communication skills as well, which is a soft skill, but it's super important. So were, were all these things instilled in you as a child or like by your parents? Or was it or was it something like you you found with time and was like, okay, I wanna I wanna do this. Yeah. No, bro. I mean um, and, and it goes to the argument that's kind of been popular lately, which is, um, is entrepreneurship hardwired in your blood? Or can it be something that's taught and just given to you? And I am on the other side. You know, I wasn't really, my family, my mom's Filipino. So I was growing up, go to school, get a job, get really good grades. And I was just kind of on that sort of thinking my whole life. But it became to a point where... Uh, it's everything switched for me. I went from employee mindset to entrepreneurial mindset and I committed to it and I was all in. So it, I think entrepreneurship is a skill that can be taught and, in, and inherited rather than hardwired, in my opinion. On on paper, I think it's, it's fair <laughs> to say that you're ahead of a lot of people your age. So what keeps you wanting to improve? Because for a lot of 19 year olds, they'd be like, well, this is it. Like, I, I'm good. So what keeps you wanting to take the next step in life? I got you. I can answer that question really great. Um, a lot of people make the mistake of competing with people below them. That's a big mistake. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, right. I don't do that. I don't compare myself to my peer group because being as like humble as possible, I'm not crazy rich crazy successful in my opinion i don't really see it in myself but yet at least but when i when i look at other people my age what are they doing you know they're drinking partying going to college don't know what they want to do with their life so i feel like i am ahead of the vast majority of my peers mm -hmm. and the worst thing i could do is constantly compare myself to that and compete down don't ever compete down compete up compete up i feel like i'm the smallest in the room with every room i go to i just i compare myself to 100 million dollar ceos i compare myself to eight nine ten figure business owners so i feel like i'm i'm a loser because <laughs> i'm not at that 
because I'm not at that level yet. So I, co- I compete up. Don't compete down. Always compete up. And it's easy to compete down because it boosts your ego. Oh, I'm making more money than than and him. I'm making more money than him. I'm, uh, I'm making more money than my dad. I'm making more money than him. Whatever it is, stop competing down. Compete up. That I think that's very uh, viable mindset to have. For real. Yeah. What What would you say are some of the best marketing tips that you have? Okay. Am I speaking to a beginner? Just. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking to. Uh, Mark, this for beginners, um, one of them, it really just comes down to knowing your audience. And it sounds more simpler than you think, because a lot of people who really get into business think they know their audience better than they do, which is a mistake I see all the time. And 90% of the time, that's just not the case. You need to get into who this person you're serving is. What One, what are the demographics, age, gender, income, uh, all those types of demographics, geographics, whether locations, city, whatever, psychographics, what are their interests, hobbies, beliefs, affiliations, communities they're in, um, behaviors, how much time do they spend online, how much time, how much do they buy, what are their shopping behavior, all that type of stuff, internet usage behavior, social social media platforms they use, all that type of stuff. But then really we get to the juice, we got to get into what are their pain points, what are their problems, what are their fears, what are their frustrations, what do they get nervous about, what are their solutions, what are their goals, what are their achievements, what are their values, Um, and what do they like to source, what are the sources of information, what books they like to read, what movies they like to watch, what movie what music do they like to listen to what type of people do they like to hang out with what type of clothes do they like to wear what do they look like and it sounds kind of creepy because marketing is kind of creepy in a way but like i said the better you understand somebody then the better you'll be able to serve them and that's been a challenge for me in my business because i'm not a counselor i never stepped in those shoes so every single day it's a constant battle it's a constant fight on trying to learn as much about my customer as possible which are counselors and therapists and just learn as much as possible about them every single day how does one find their audience okay it comes down to understanding who you can add the most value to what audience can you add the most value to and most of the time which i'd like to recommend for people is to pick an audience who is very similar to you and who is currently struggling with the problems that you currently struggled with and overcame, right? And that's kind of what I'm doing with my personal brand content because I am serving people who are 16 to 22, who are looking to become entrepreneurs, looking to start and grow their business. They probably don't really know how to start. They read Rich Dad, they probably read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. They look up to people like Gary Vee, Robert Kawasaki and maybe Alex Hermosi and maybe those types of people. I know my audience so well because I was in those shoes. So mm. that's something I'd recommend. People who talk your slang, people who look like you, people who wear the same clothes as you, who has the same interest as you, you'll be able to serve them. And also it's marketing psychology, market, marketing psychology, it's a re- relatability thing. If Because people love People like and trust people who they can relate to, obviously. So if you look like them in a way, if you talk like them in a way, if you believe some of their beliefs and perspectives and values in a way, if you listen to their favorite music in a way, if you like their favorite celebrities in a way, they're going to relate to you and they're going to build a strong connection with you, which is priceless. How does one stay consistent day after day? Even on the days that you don't want to do it. I don't want to say because I mean, it's just love what you're doing. I mean, that's just what I do. I don't know if I can answer this question well, but it, this is what worked for me. Mm-hmm. It's just love what you do. Just love what you do. I, I, I found what I love to do, which is the game of business. Um, I wake up, get straight to work, eat breakfast, back to work, eat lunch, back to work, go to the gym, back to work, sleep, repeat. Um, and I'm just excited about what I do. And that's what keeps me consistent because it's just a lifestyle. Because if you work for a long period, for a period of time, you're going to get to the point where it's addicting. Like you literally, literally can't stop. It's If you are inconsistent, if you don't work for two days in a row, you're going to feel depressed within me, you know? Mm. So I don't even think about working. I uh, don't feel like it today. I just go. It's just part of my blood, you know? <laughs> 
my last question. Uh, if dinner with five people that are alive, who would they be? Ooh, dinner with five people that are alive. Okay, okay. I'll give you one. Um, I never thought about this question before. One person I'm really looking up to right now in the entrepreneurial community is um. You ever heard of Alex Ramosi? I think I have. I think I, I might have to look him up, but I think I have. It'd be him. He's alive, obviously. Patrick Bed David. He's alive too. I like him a lot. Um, third. Man, why not get LeBron Braun up in here, man? <laughs> why not get Braun Braun up in here? Um, I'd like to get um, why we not get Coles up in here? Let's get Cobes up in here. Mm-hmm. Kobe Bryant. Um, I want to adopt some killer instinct. I love just the way he thinks. I study that. And you know what's something that's I'm gonna regret this. I'm I'm not I'm not gonna regret this, but tomorrow I wouldn't I wouldn't say this if you asked me yesterday or tomorrow. I'm, I'm gonna say Mr. Beast, <laughs> the YouTuber. Oh, I think that's and, little- no, and here's why. It's not I'm not like a bit Mr. Beast, Mr. Beast. I don't watch all the videos. Yeah. I don't really do that. But it's the fact that I've been studying how successful people think. And I love the way he thinks. Mm. He he's the biggest YouTuber on the planet. And the reason how he hit that level of success was because from day one, when he was like 15, he set the goal. I am going to be the biggest YouTuber on the planet. And he obsessively thought about it every single day. He was upset. That's because when you're obsessed with something, it's all you want to talk about. It's all you want to think about. It's all you want to study. It's all you want to hang around. It's all you want to do. And whenever you do that on a competed basis every single day, like how I'm doing, it's going to be virtually impossible to not achieve what you want to achieve. Mm-hmm. So that's I want to be. I, that's something I kind of want to be around. You know. Gotcha. Cool. Yep. Oh, I thought you had a question. You got any questions, Prince? Got you. Yeah, this has been a great one, man. And uh, you, uh, you're, you're a good guest. And um, I've spoken to people my age, and they definitely don't have a lot of what you have. So Appreciate keep it, going, man, for real. Appreciate it, bro. And thanks for having me on. Um, I've seen y'all's, uh, I did some research. I looked at y'all's in-person mm-hmm. podcast. And y'all grinding, bro. Y'all grinding, bro. Love the energy, bro. Thanks, <laughs> bro.